Media Accessibility and Access Services Users and Access Services Video 1 Hello and welcome to Unit 4 of Module 1A dedicated to Media Accessibility and Access Services. I am Isabel Robert, Senior Lecturer at the University of Antwerp. Access Services can be categorized in different ways. A first distinction that can be made is whether these services are used for live events, such as live cultural events, or whether they are used for an audiovisual content or product, such as a film. Let's start with the accessibility of live cultural events. In Unit 3, you have learned about outdoor and indoor accessibility of cultural venues. Once this outdoor and indoor accessibility is ensured, the aim is to make sure that the live performance itself be it a theatre theater play or an opera, is accessible. As we will explain later in this video, there are many access services that can be used to make a live performance accessible. As said before, access services can also be used for people to have access to an audiovisual product. Again, and similar to live cultural events, there are many access services that can be used to make an audiovisual content accessible. Some of these services are actually used in both contexts. Besides, let's not forget that nowadays, theatre plays, for example, sometimes include audiovisual content, which means that accessibility services have to be offered for the live performance and its audiovisual component when necessary. Other distinctions can be made, based, for example, on whether they include some kind of translation process be it interlingual, intralingual, or intersemiotic. Think of subtitles in your own language on TV for a film in another language. Subtitles in this case are interlingual and thus their production includes an interlingual translation process. Surtitles at the theatre are also access services that include a translation process that can be intralingual when the sub surtitles are in the same language as the performance or interlingual when they are in another language. Finally, you could also think of a typology based on when the access services are actually produced. Subtitles on TV, for example, can be produced live through respeaking, for example, which is a technique in which a respeaker listens to what a person says, respeaks it to a speech recognition software, which turns the respeaker's words into subtitles displayed on the screen with the shortest possible delay. In short, there are many ways to categorize access services. In this presentation, we will start with access services for live cultural events. In the next video, we will turn to access services for audiovisual products. In the past, access services were categorized on the basis of the different types of disability. Today, however, access services start from the needs of the general public. This is also the approach that we're going to take to categorize access services for live cultural events. We will distinguish between three types of support which correspond to three types of needs. In doing so, we actually use the typologies suggested in the MOOC for the training of accessibility managers for live cultural events. This MOOC was developed by different partners, among which the University of Antwerp in the ACT Erasmus Plus project. I was a partner in this project and I was one of the developers of a unit where we addressed access services for live cultural events. So this part of the presentation will be based on a similar presentation created for the ACT MOOC. As I said before, there are three types of support. The first two are support for access to visual information and support for access to auditory information. The third type is any additional form of support not directly related to the above mentioned sciences. The two main types of support, support for access to visual information and support for access to auditory information, each rely on the same three channels, even though they have different target groups. These three channels are the visual, the auditory and the tactile channel. Let's start with the support for access to visual information. For each of the three channels used for this type of support, 
visual, auditory and tactile, one or more access services can be offered. Some of these access services are offered just before the performance or event, others are offered during. The visual channel can be used before the performance to provide information leaflets in large letters, for example. The auditory channel can be used before the performance to provide audio introductions and during the performance to provide audio descriptions and or subtitles. Finally, the tactile channel can be used just before the performance to provide information leaflets in braille and to provide touch tours, usually including some form of auditory support as well. But what are all these access services exactly? We will give you a brief definition of the lesser known services. An audio introduction is an oral text read out before the performance and which contains some essential information about it. An audio description is an oral text read during the performance which gives a verbal rendering of the visual information to which certain audiences might not have access because they have a visual impairment, for instance, or difficulty focusing. Audio subtitles are provided during the performance and give an oral reading of subtitles or surtitles. During touch tours before the performance, the audience can touch props and furniture in order to get acquainted with the set. To conclude this section, we look at the people and technologies used to provide these six services. The professional who provides audio introductions, audio descriptions, audio subtitling and also auditory support for touch tours is called an audio describer. This is usually a translator or language expert with a specialization in audiovisual translation and accessibility. As far as the provision of information leaflets in braille or large letters is concerned, this is the responsibility of professionals with a background in text processing. Let's now turn to support for access to auditory information. Just like before, for each of these uh, the three channels, visual, auditory and tactile, one or more access services can be offered. Some can be offered just before the performance, some can be offered during the performance. The visual channel can be used before the performance to provide sign language interpreting in a general introduction. During the performance itself, the visual channel can also be used for sign language interpreting, for surtitles, subtitles and surtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. The auditory channel can be used during the performance to provide a hearing loop. Finally, the tactile channel can be used during the performance to provide vibrating chairs. But again, what are all these services exactly? Sign language interpreting renders verbal information through sign language using hand signs, gestures and facial expressions. Surtitles provide a written rendering of spoken texts. In the case of surtitles and subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing, this text is supplemented with additional information, for example, identifying speakers or important sound effects. The hearing loop or induction loop is a sound system for people with hearing aids which amplifies the sound coming from the stage. The vibrating chairs allow deaf and hard of hearing people to feel music through vibrations. To conclude, we look at the people and technologies used to provide these six services. The professional who provides sign language interpreting just before and during the performance is a sign language interpreter. The professional providing surtitles and subtitles is a subtitler specialized in audiovisual translation. As far as the provision of hearing loops and vibrating chairs is concerned, these are devices provided by specialized companies. How about additional services? In case a performance is meant for interna an international public, it may be necessary to translate most, if not all, of the above services interlingually from one language into the language of your region or country. Finally, some people cannot easily process a multitude of information all at once. They may benefit from additional materials that improve accessibility. These may either replace the services I have already mentioned or they can be offered in addition to them. For instance, just before the performance, audiences may receive easy to read materials. 
The performance itself is then what is usually called relaxed. This means that it is adapted to the audience's specific needs. This adaptation can take different forms depending on the type of audiences in the venue. For the provision of interlingual translations, you need professional translators. For the creation of relaxed performances, you need specialized technical staff as well as a specialized and experienced artistic team. To sum up, it is clear that you have a lot of services that can be offered to make an event or performance more accessible. This table provides a complete overview of the three support types that can be used before and during the performance as discussed in this video. In the next video, we will focus on audiovisual products. Thank you.